this video we're going to talk about the different factors involved in an experiment called variables and kind of how we're going to uh, design our experiments to account for all the variables that might be involved. Okay, so first we need to define what is a variable. So the, the kind of most basic definition of a variable would be basically anything that can change in the experiment. Now that could be you changing the variable yourself as the experimenter or you could, it could be something that changes on its own. All right, so any factor, any, anything involved in the, in the experiment that you can observe and that can change or be changed or measured, any of that is going to be considered a variable. Okay, so the two most important types of variables that we need to know are the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, so in an experiment, the independent variable is the variable that you're controlling, that you're manipulating or changing in the experiment, all right? And the dependent variable is the variable that responds to those changes that you made in the independent variable. Okay, so if we think of an example here, let's say we're trying to do an experiment to see how the size of a bicycle affects how fast you can go on that bicycle. So in this case, the independent variable would be the size because we're controlling that. We're gonna test bikes that are different sizes and see how fast they can go. And the dependent variable would then be the speed or how fast that bike would go because we're controlling the size and then seeing how the speed changes when we change the size of the bike. Okay, So the independent variable is always what you're controlling or manipulating in the experiment and the dependent variable is what responds to that. What happens when you change the things that you change? Okay, So when we're looking at an experiment, uh, there are good ways to design an experiment and bad ways to design an experiment. So what I want you to do right now is look at this data table and see if you were to look at this data table and your friend says to you, wow, if you, if you play a lot of video games, you're gonna get great test scores. Um, what do you think of that argument? If you wanna pause the video right now, base this not on your opinion, but only on the data table in front of you. Okay, so based on purely on this data, what do you think of this argument that video games definitely give you uh, better test grades? All right, so when we look at this, I'm hoping that you recognize there's a problem here. The video games, uh, as we go kind of from top to bottom on this table, the amount of video games played went up, right? We went from two to four to five to eight, and the test scores went up as well. We went from 55, 67, 81, 99. So that makes sense, right? As the number of video games increased, test scores increased okay the the argument isn't totally crazy but what else is going on here right we have a couple of other variables in in this experiment right this would be the independent variable if he's saying as we change the number of uh, hours of video games you played this is what happens to the dependent variable or your test grade all right so the problem is we have these other two variables here that we haven't really accounted for and what's happened to these variables? Well, we have different number of hours playing soccer, so maybe that exercise or playing soccer could help or hurt test grades. And we also have study time that increased, right? So we have study time that went from zero to three to six to 11, right? So this increased as well. So both the number of video game hours and the number of study hours both increased, and so did the test grades. So we don't know for sure if it was the video game playing that increased the student's test scores or the study time that increased the student's test scores. Now we can probably guess and say it was most likely the studying that helped the student's test scores be higher, but the, the problem with this design is that we're changing more than one variable at once. Okay, so that leads us into our next point. When you're designing an experiment, you only wanna change one variable at a time. Okay, this is very important. The problem with the experiment that we just looked at was that he was the, the experimenter was trying to change more than one variable at once, right? We need to keep these other variables. If we're looking at uh, and we're trying to see how video games affect test grades, we want to keep these two variables constant, all right? We don't want to change these because if we change more than one thing at once, we can't tell what actually had the effect on that dependent variable, okay? So when you're doing an experiment, you always wanna change only one variable at a time. This is very, very important to understand. So you change your independent variable, 
you see what happens to the dependent variable, and then everything else you want to be a control variable. And that's what these other variables are called. The, the variables that we're not directly looking at, those are called control variables, and we want to keep them constant. Right? So the reason that we do this, again, is so we can tell what variable actually has the effect that we're looking for, or the effect that we're examining. Right? If we change too many variables at once, we don't know which one actually made a difference. All right? So you keep all the variables constant except for one, you change that, and then see what happens based on the one variable that you changed. Okay, so the last thing here, uh, pause the video and try and answer this question on your own. Uh, this guy, he, uh, Jeff, he's trying to see how the amount of sunlight affects how well a plant grows. Okay, so the amount of sunlight here would be our independent variable and how well it grows, or we could maybe measure the height of the plant, would be the dependent variable. Okay, so what he does is he takes one plant by the window with a lot of soil, that you know, healthy soil and water, and he sets up another plant in a dark corner of the room, uses rocky dirt that's not as good for the plant to grow, and he doesn't water the plant much. All right, so the plant by the window grows better, and Jeff says it's definitely because of the light. So what I want you to figure out is what's wrong with this experiment. Hopefully by now this should be uh, pretty straightforward. So pause the video and uh, come back when you're ready for the answer. So what's wrong with this experiment is that Jeff didn't control all the variables that he wanted to con that he should have controlled, right? So he changed the amount of sunlight, right, by putting one plant in a shady place and one plant with uh, a window with a lot of with a lot of sunlight. Okay, so that's good, right? He changed his independent variable, but the problem was he didn't control the other variables, right? We went from nice soil to not as nice soil, and we went from a lot of water to not much water, right? So these other variables, the soil and the water, should have been controlled in the experiment. They should have been kept constant so we could tell if it was really the light that made a difference or if it maybe was the soil that made more of a difference than the light. Okay, so when you're designing these experiments, again, the most important thing is to change one variable at a time and only one variable and then keep the rest of those variables constant. All right, thanks for watching this video on variables and I'll see you in the next one.